Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. You may have seen this before. Now, if you follow my good buddy, Juji Mufu, also known as John Cole, you may have seen this on his channel. He was up here a few months back and he was a little bit intrigued. <laughs> he knows that for breakfast, I have kind of a version of pancakes that I've customized and I'm making it in advance because a lot of mornings I'm up really, really early. So it's not uncommon for me to be up at 4 a.m. and training by 5 a.m. And a lot of times, you know, waking up, making breakfast, I just, I don't wanna say I don't have the time, but I kinda don't have the time. <laughs> and at 4 a.m. I'm tired, man. I would like to just pull something from the fridge and eat. And I am a huge, huge fan of whole eggs. I love whole eggs, um, but sometimes prepping them in the morning is just not in the cards. So it's nice to have something I can prep in advance where either I have it every morning of the week or maybe there's three or four mornings a week where it's really challenging and I have something ready to go. Now you're not gonna go just prepping eggs in advance because when you go to have them, it's gonna be a little fucking weird, right? So using a recipe where essentially I make almost like a modified pancake where I put a lot of eggs into it allows me to incorporate eggs into a recipe that I can prep in advance is delicious and it helps me to hit you know, basically all the macros that I would normally hope to achieve with a normal breakfast and it saves me time. And I love the taste. I think I already said that, it's delicious. So I'm gonna walk you through it and I think you may find this really, really useful. Not a lot of ingredients. We've got whole eggs. And in case you're curious, I do opt for pasture-raised eggs. Now, there's a lot of different egg options out there. There's just regular old conventional eggs and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them per se. But a thing you might notice, if, you, if I were to crack one of these eggs next to a conventional egg, you probably notice an immediate difference in the color of the yolks. What does that indicate? Generally, if a yolk is dark orange, it's definitely more nutrient dense it, and it tastes way better. So in, eggs from chickens that have been pasture raised, they let them go outside, they eat whatever, now you may, see, may have seen eggs simply labeled as organic. You might say, ooh, that's the best option. Not necessarily, because in order for them to say that the chicken consumed an organic diet, that means they controlled the diet. And what does that mean? Well, they basically gave it organic corn. Compared to a chicken that has access to outside, can eat bugs and all that other shit that chickens eat, that is a superior egg. Same thing, you've got omega-3 eggs. What does that mean? probably means that they were fed a diet that's a combination of corn and flax seeds. Now, who knows what is the FDA or whoever is overseeing it, what they mandate the percentage has to be or what the level of omega-3s has to be in the eggs. I don't know, but I'm going to tell you right now, pasture-raised eggs are your best bet. And these are Whole Foods 365 store brand. I think they cost about $4.60 a dozen. Definitely the best eggs I found for that money. Next, we've got mix. Now, I opt generally for a gluten-free mix. I'm not, I don't have celiac, right? I can eat gluten, I eat bagels, I love it. But I will say, when I consume too much of it, I shouldn't even say that. The point is, I feel better when I don't eat a lot of gluten-containing carbohydrates. So opting for things like rice and potatoes and sometimes oats, I feel a lot better than consuming a lot of wheat-based carbohydrates. To that end, they now make a lot of gluten-free mixes, right? So here's a few different ones. Um, I have experience with these two. This was my go-to for a long time, the Bisquick one. I find it really, really light and fluffy, but sometimes a little bit dry. Total opposite is the 365 one, which is not dry, but it's almost like a little chewy, like gummy. And it makes sense because the second ingredient on it or in it is sorghum flour, which is almost like a gum. So I picked these up, right? This is made by King Arthur. And this one is made by Bob's Red Mill. Haven't tried them yet, but I'm gonna try these today. In the past, what I would do is cut, cut the recipe like half this, half this, uh, to kind of not be as dry, but also not be as gummy. So you could play around with this. You could, you could use straight up Bisquick if you want, if you like crusties, right? That's a real popular uh, brand of pancake mix. You could use that. It doesn't have to be gluten-free. I just opt for the gluten-free variety. So you've got the pancake mix. I've got some berries. 
right? This is a combination of strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, and um, it's definitely more cost effective buying them frozen. Buying them fresh, berries can get really, really pricey. Uh, so not only for the convenience factor, but also cost opt for frozen. I've got oat milk. I don't consume dairy. I'm not saying that dairy is bad or that oat milk is more nutritionally superior, not at all. To be totally honest, I would probably say that whole milk, not probably, most definitely, is more nutritious so long as it sits well with you. When I consume dairy, I feel like shit, so I avoid it. I wish that wasn't the case because I would prefer to consume cow's milk rather than freaking oat milk, okay? But I like the taste of this and it serves the purpose in the recipe. Cinnamon, little factoid. Most of the cinnamon that you're buying in the store is not real cinnamon. It's called kasha or kacha or whatever the F it is. It's basically a tree bark that they grind up and call it cinnamon, but it's not really. Real cinnamon is Ceylon cinnamon. Yes, it's a little bit pricier, but when they talk about health benefits from cinnamon, they're talking about this stuff and not the tree bark that you've probably been buying. So I include that in the recipe. That's basically it. I've got a stand mixer here. Do you need a stand mixer? No, you could absolutely do this with a bowl and a whisk and a little bit of elbow grease, but I have one. You know where I got this? My father found this at the dump. Yep, all I had to do was buy a bowl for it and um, I've had it almost 10 years now. It works like a dream. Mm -hmm. The best part. Oh, made in the USA. That's why it's still working. It's like 40 years old. So let's begin. All right, let's get down to it now. Keep in mind, I'm gonna give you guys the recipe for this, but it's not an exact science here. I'm gonna make four days worth. Why four days? Uh, basically because that's how many eggs I have at the moment. <laughs> I could make a whole week's worth at a time. You could make however many days. Maybe if you're new to this, you just wanna try four days. I wouldn't do three, I would do four and I'll tell you why. The way it works out, you could fit two days per half sheet pan. So if you do three, it's gonna get a little weird. So first step is to basically crack all the eggs into the bowl and then we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. So let the cracking begin. If you have children at home or anyone else you can put to work and not pay them, you can have them do this. I would tell you don't crack it on here because sometimes it makes, for whatever reason, it's a greater tendency for little bits of shell to end up in the bowl. I've had that happen, you know, you're eating breakfast and all of a sudden you start crunching on eggshell. It's kind of gross. Apparently some people eat the shells too. Savages. Yes. I'm not there. Maybe someday I'll be that badass. So obviously, doing two dozen eggs for four days, that's six eggs a day. I'm at a point in my diet where I'm having seven eggs a day, then I would add another four eggs to this. Not a big deal, not an exact science. To this, I'm going to add four, one, two, they're heaping, three, four, four half teaspoons, so probably realistically more like two and a half to three because they're heaping actual teaspoons of cinnamon. It comes to the mix. Right. Basically gonna do a half a cup of mix per day. So if there's four days here, you're gonna do two whole cups. And because I'm trying two different ones and I'm gonna combine them, I'm gonna do one cup of each. So. And by doing that, right, a half a cup is gonna give you about oh, 65 grams of carbs from the mix itself 
We're also gonna add a little bit of fruit to it, so that's gonna be a little more carbs on top of that. before I actually put it on the stand. Because sometimes when you turn the mixer on, it, um, it can kind of get a puff of pancake powder. some mix. So, I was looking at the pans, I was thinking to myself, wait a minute, these pans look too big. These are the size I use. So these I think are technically a quarter sheet pan, and I get two days worth in each. So I've got four days right here. It's really simple. I just hit each of them with some pan. In terms of how much goes into each, now obviously it depends. If you add more eggs, if you use um, you know less pancake mix, whatever the case may be, the point is you want to just split it up evenly. So if you have two pans, easiest thing to do is using your ladle, put one ladle full into one pan, put a ladle full into the second, back to the first. to the second that way you just keep divvying it up evenly because depending on how exactly you do it I can't tell you exactly how much mix to put in the pan right and if you had three pans you would still do it the same way you put one and one and then another one this for me usually comes out to about four ladle fulls per pan so the last one is usually just a little bit short of a full ladle then all we have to do is add some berries. Now, strawberries in here are whole, so I kind of just cut them up. These obviously are frozen, but I let them sit out a little bit, about an hour or two prior to doing this, so that they soften up. And I'm just gonna take it and kind of Spread it around. You know, you can add as much as you want, as little as you want. You don't have to put any berries in it at all. You could put no fruit. You could put bananas. Um, I wouldn't put apples or oranges. That'd be just weird. But pretty much anything you put into a normal pancake could go in there. Could put chocolate chips. What I'm telling you is, this is your world, man. You can do anything you want. You know, it's funny, because a lot of times people look for an exact, you know, like one exact measurement. Um, 
They want to know exactly what you do. And sometimes that's important. Right? Like if we were baking a cake, you, you want to get the measurements right. Uh, accuracy is very important. For making these things, not important. It kind of reminds me of like the other morning, I posted a video of myself bench pressing in my basement. And I was feeling kind of strong and I think I got 315 for like almost 20 reps. And how many people asked me like, oh man, like, what do you eat for breakfast? What do you take for your pre-workout? I think they were expecting something like high tech. And I was like, well, I eat uh, six eggs and some ham and a toasted roll and a cup of tea. And like, dude, that's it. So just sometimes, man, just, just go with it. Like maybe I didn't give you grams of everything here, but you saw what I did. Just try it. It'll be fine. That's enough berries for my liking. All right. I'm going to put these in the oven. Just let them do their thing. Now this is the tricky part. You don't want to go dumping raw egg all over your oven. Because that'll make a real big freaking mess. Take your time when you're doing this. Those are going to take like, I don't know, 25 minutes. So collectively, I spent maybe a half an hour doing this, but if you divide a half an hour by four breakfasts, what's that, eight, eight minutes of breakfast? I can't make breakfast each morning in eight minutes and there'll be virtually no cleanup and it's gonna taste great. So definitely helps to increase efficiency. I feel like the hamburger helper, the hand when I have these on. Um, they're ready, so check this out. Starts to brown up just a little bit on top. Take it out, let it cool. You know what? No, that's ready too. Just kind of, if it's ever like liquidy in the middle, it's no good, but that's cooked. I'm not too sure exactly what to expect from this mix. So some mix, you know, you don't have to cook it as much because it just has, like I said, more of a chewy texture. And some of it just tends to get very light, airy, and almost dry. So again, gotta play around with it. But one way or another, these are gonna have the macros, they're gonna be ready on time, and considering the ingredients, I know that they're gonna taste good. So that's that. I'm gonna let them cool, and then, because each one of them has two days, I'm gonna cut it in half, cut it in half, and then basically I'm gonna cut this into quarters, is what I'm trying to tell you. And I just put them in the fridge and have them. When I'm ready to eat them, pull them out, and that's it, it's that easy. So simple. Those are the eggs, oat milk, don't have to use oat milk, could use regular cow's milk. Cinnamon, pancake mix, a little bit of Pam, and the fruit, that's it, simple. All you need is the oven preheated to 350 to 400. Sometimes I'm a little impatient, so I'll just put it at 400. <laughs> but if you're not being as impatient as I am, 350 is probably more optimal, but very little in the way of prep time, probably in total, about a half an hour. And considering you get four meals out of it, like I said, that's about eight minutes per meal. You're not making breakfast in eight minutes, especially not eggs and something this delicious. And cleanup is gonna be so minimal because all you're gonna have to do is take this, put it on a plate, pop it in the microwave, start eating. So it's just a win-win all around. Hope you enjoyed this, give it a try. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.